How do we consider him that has suffered the, the agony of pain and shame and railing for you? We cannot consider one another, Zakim, Mahalia, or even down to the youngest of the children, the Bame of Yisra'ya. How can we consider Yahshua HaMashiach? How do we meditate upon the Torah? How do we walk according to his statutes and his commandments? If we do not consider even the least of those among us, Israel. I do want to start here somewhat, not a specific direction, but yet we're on the path unto the Melchut, the kingdom of Yah. The wisdom of Yah, where Yahweh desire us as a people and as a nation to accomplish and to do. As we meditate, as we remember with Zakaz, we consider all that Almighty Yahweh has done for us. I do want to start here, Yisrael, as I get into this teaching, the simplicity of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh today. In Proverbs chapter 6. Verse 5. No, verse 6. You know, we're people with slowful, with sluggish, especially when it comes to considering ourselves, even the small things, Yisra'ya. You know, a wise man, as Dawi, as Solomon, when they beheld the kingdom, their kingdom, Melkut, and the beauty of Almighty Yahweh, it wasn't just the mountains of the great riches, right. but it was the smallest of things that they took in consideration, observing, took time to meditate upon. We don't do that, Yisrael. Even in the Song of Solomon, there were verse that express that about the foxes, but it's the little foxes mm -hmm. that spoil the vine. Yes, it it's the little things, Yisrael, the, 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 the ma'ut, the things we do not consider. We overlook them. Yes, we pass by them. We think no one else sees them. Yes, yes. But yet Yah sees. Those that have the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh, they see those things. Yes. And what we as a people we need to do yes. is start at the small things. Yes. We must be faithful in the least. Yes. We must be faithful in the small things. Yes. Because by doing that, we're trained. Mm -hmm. Our minds are trained. We become stronger that we can attack and that we can overcome the greater things, yes. Israel. Yes. But it says here in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6, Go to the ant. Yes, sir. How many of us consider the ant? Many times we don't even think about them unless we're bitten. We feel something crawling upon on us. And what is that? What is that? We don't consider the ant. Solomon did. He considered the ant. I believe there were hours as he watched. Days he would go back and look and consider the ant. Why? He said, Go to the ant, you sluggard. You wicked one, you slow for one. You know, a slow for man is not just one that doesn't do anything, but it's also one that does not consider the small things. Oh, he, he may do the big things that it can be seen. I'm going to do that because, uh, you know, somebody know I did something. So. But that has no relevance and it's not important if you don't tend to the small things. He said, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. If we would just observe the Torah when it 
talks about a isha or her, many times it's alluding to wisdom. Many a times, Israel. Which having no guide, there's no one to instruct that one little thing and what to do or the path it must take or its responsibility for the time or for the season. Provided her meat in the summer. They work hard. They put back. They store. They reserve. They take what is needed for that time and they put the rest back. And gathereth her food in the harvest. Mm -hmm. What are we gathering, Yisrael? Oh, yes. In the time of harvest. Yes. Yes. Have we become lazy mm -hmm. and slothful yes. that we do not gather the fruits of Torah, yes. the fruits of the knowledge of wisdom and understanding, the small oh, things, yes. the things that are milled, the things that we overlook, Yisrael? Yes. We need to store those things in our labab, in our minds, in our hearts. Why? Because there's a time that is coming, sure is. which we are somewhat in now, Israel, the beginning of winter, yes, sure is. where the plants and the things do not grow as they do in the summer. The so we must preserve sure we must. somewhat of a night season. Mm -hmm. We find that even the light of the day is shortened, sure is. and the night season is lengthened. In this time, we're in the night season, Israel. Yeah. You know, we don't have the time we once had to meditate and to store and to work in this time of light, Israel, as we once had. So we need to meditate upon the Torah, upon the small things, Israel. We must find those the small things that lies within ourselves and our bosom. And it's not that we do not know, Yisrael, because Yahweh reveals it unto us daily. What we must do. You know, I must use this example concerning the truck that I drive. I'm not a master mechanic. But if anyone would listen to a vehicle, Akshimri, you know your vehicle. You know when something's not right, when the feel is different. When it seemed as though the horsepower is not there. But I had been observing something for a while. Reason being because a lot of the newer vehicles, they're not as simple as the older vehicles. So even though the vehicle I drive being a 2005, when you pull up the hood, they're just things you just don't want to deal with. Parts are smaller. They're in tight places. They're hard to get to. So even though... Hearing the sputtering and the missing, and the missing of the engine of the vehicle, I knew just about where the problem was. Mm -hmm. And when I would pull the hood, I would look and I'm like, man, it's going to take an hour, hour and a half to get to that little thing. So I would somewhat put it aside for the moment, for the time. Until there was the appropriate time to a time needed. Well, what happened? For me doing that, it came to a point where that thing had to be dealt with ASAP as soon as possible. So I find myself pulling over, getting to the nearest uh, parts store, and having to take that thing, assemble that thing. It, it, it took, well, it took at least an hour to get to it to find out what the problem is, put it back together, clean it up, that I can get to where I need to go to get the, the right part. And boy, it was hard to get to that thing. The distributor cap. On the older vehicles, they were, they were nice and big. You can get to any little things. It's, it's that, that thin. And it's under wires, hoses. So you had to take all those things apart. You got to know where they go to get to that one little thing. And lo and behold, when I pulled the part and looked under it, it was the rotary button. It's just a small thing, a piece of lead. That sits in the top of the cap, about big as an eraser. Yeah. Well, it come apart, it come loose. And it caused me, or the vehicle, not to run properly. Yes. Hard to get 35, 40 miles per hour because of that one small little part, the size of an eraser. But it took time. 
to execute what was necessary to get to that Yisrael. As soon as we notice, when we consider, when we take heed, when we observe, when we watch, not our neighbor, not the wicked man, but ourselves. We need to execute the judgment of Almighty Yahweh immediately upon that thing. Why? Because it's not time, Yisrael, to procrastinate. It's not, there's no time for us to be sluggers, to be slowful, to know what, we, what needs to be done, what we have to do, and to put it aside, it is wrong, Israel. Yeah. Have we considered ourselves today? Yes. Help me, God. Help me. Yes. Let me continue on. It says, provided her meat in verse 8 in the summertime and gathered her food at harvest. How long will thou sleep, O sluggard? Yeah. When will you arise out of your sleep? When will we, Israel, y'all rise out of our sleep? When will we walk in all that Yahweh has commanded us to do? He has laid it out. He has made it simple for us. And it's not hard. What makes it hard is the sin and the iniquity, Israel. We must locate those things, Israel. We must destroy everything that do not please Almighty Yahweh. We must correct our path and the paths that we take that are not according to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. He said, how long will you sleep? He said in verse 10, yet a little sleep and a little slumber and a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come as one that travel. And thy want as an armed man. Sure it will be. It's nothing like one that travels or that is labored to get to a certain place and do not have the protection that he needs yes. to keep him or preserve him. He has not took the proper necessities on his travels, Israel. And he has taken. He's like a man without a sword in the midst of a battle. Yes. He's like a... a a man that is fighting, he has no protection and no shield, Yisrael. That is what it is like when we do not attain unto the things that Yahweh has commanded us to attain. He has given us Yahshua HaMashiach, yet we do not consider him, Yisrael. But we consider ourselves, what we want, how we feel, but yet we don't consider our, 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 our hope. We don't consider a Zakain. We don't consider the Bain the children of Israel. We don't consider Yahshua HaMashiach that has suffered for us, Israel. And yet we have not even got, even unto the, the, if I may say, the bottom of his shoes for what he has suffered and has endured for us, Israel, and for you. Hallelujah. So it's time for us, Israel, to, to, to take back the time which has been lost. To search our hearts, to search our minds, to search and see what our very intent, what it truly is, Yisrael, and then to walk according to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Or are we just looking for a free ride? Are we just abiding here for the time? What is our purpose, Yisrael? It's time for us to consider, Yisrael. It says here in Mishli, Proverbs chapter 22, let us turn to Yisrael. Mishli chapter 24, verse 31. We must be wise in this last hour, Israel. And a wise man, he judges, he understands the time. He understands the season. Yes, yeah. He understands what it takes to accomplish that which Yahweh has commanded him to do, Israel. It says in your chapter 24, verse 31. Yes. And this is Solomon. This is him speaking. Because as he walked, as he traveled amongst the kingdom, he took heed to this certain vineyard of this garden. He said, I went by the field of the slothful, a man without wisdom, 
one that did not consider where his food comes from. He was one that did not consider where his health and where his wealth come from. He did not consider Almighty Yahweh. He said, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns. He said, I passed by in verse 30. By the vineyard of the son of man, or Adam, that lacks an understanding left. Do we lack an understanding left? Yes, right, y'all. Do we lack the ability to just stop for a moment and to meditate? To understand what Yahweh is speaking unto us in this last generation, Israel, Yah. You know, he gives us all that we need in Yahshua HaMashiach. That our gardens, that our minds, that our vineyards, our labah, will not be overgrown with the filth of the world. Will not be overcome with the lust. Of the flesh, Yisrael Yah. That we cannot walk according to the Mishra, according to the Torah of Yah. We are without excuse. But Solomon said, I observe, and lo, in verse 31, it was all grown over with thorns. What really can grow amongst a thicket of thorns, Yisrael Yah? And if anything can abide or stay there, who want to take the time to really partake of the fruit? You don't want to dig through thorns to get to a, a piece of fruit, Yisrael Yah. And Nethos had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof, it was broken down. The many uses for a stone wall or a fence, Yisrael Yah, is to keep what you have inside from going over its borders or its bounds, yes. and to keep that which on the outside from coming in yes. and partaking of the fruit yes. or destroying the vineyard, mm-hmm. to keep the little foxes out. That's, the truth. Yeah. That's what it is for. That's what the wall is for. That's what we have fences for, to keep our animals from getting into the gardens. Yes. And sometimes they still, the small ones, they find their way out, Yisrael. Yeah. But Solomon went by this vineyard. He observed it. A man of wisdom, understanding. He thought about it. He seen the walls of it tore down. Anything could get in there. He says in verse 32, when I saw, when I considered it, when I beheld it for a time, I meditated upon it, this vineyard, this place, torn down in a mess. The first thing he did is started considering his own left, yes. his own heart. Yes. Has he walked according to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh? Where have I fallen short? I'm looking at this vineyard, but this vineyard, it, it reflects me and my heart. Yes. Where I stand in the Torah of Yah. Yes. When do we really look upon our hearts, Yisrael Yah? Uh, yes. We just stand still for a moment yes. and really see where we are oh, yes. in Yahshua HaMashiach. How far we have traversed or we have walked from the day before. Yes. How far have we gotten, Yisrael? Yeah. How pure is our heart? How have we been watching over our own vineyard? Yes. Are the walls tore down? Yes. Eo, he had a hedge. He had a wall about him, Yisrael. Yeah. Yes. Whereby even uh, Satan yes. and the power that Yah has given him for a moment, he could not even approach. Upon EO to the point by he was chasing after the easy things where he could get to. One that was not walking after the Torah, one's mind being taken by every wind of doctrine. Those are the ones that are easy for Satan. But even when he, amongst the Melakim, the Malak, the sons of Yah, Yahweh asked him, where have you been? What have you been doing? He said, I've been going to and fro in the earth. So he was busy. He was not sitting idle. Sure was, no. Yahweh said, have you considered Eo? Yes, that's what he asked. Satan, he did not consider Eo. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even upon his, his mind. Why? Because he had a hedge about him. He couldn't touch him. So he was after the little fish. 
He wasn't at the EO. There was nothing he could do until Almighty Yahweh gave him space. Yahweh allowed the cracks to come upon the wall of that hedge that was about EO. And the enemy, he came in, did he not? He flushed in like a, a mighty river into the life of EO. But yet, the man, he stood. Why? Because not only was the Torah a hedge about him, but it was a hedge about his mind. A hedge about his life. His high, his life came from Almighty Yahweh. And Yahweh said, no, nah, Satan, you can't touch that. Where is the hedge that is about us, Yisrael? Is Yahshua our hedge? Is he round about us? Does not the Torah of Almighty Yahweh doesn't protect us, Yisrael? But yet we cannot be sluggard. We cannot be slowful. Hallelujah. You must attend unto the business of Almighty Yahweh. Solomon said, I, I saw, I observed. I watched intently. And he said, I considered it well. Yes, he did. I judge the matter. Yes. You know, when we consider things well, Yisrael, the first thing we will do, we'll apply it to our own yes. selves. We'll yes. apply the situation, the circumstance. That's what Solomon did. Yes. He applied it to himself. Yes, if we will be a wise nation and a wise people, as Yahweh has commanded us, Yisrael, we'll apply the Torah, the judgment of Almighty Yahweh to ourselves. We'll not let anything escape. He said, I saw. And then he said, I considered it well. And I gazed. I looked upon it. I observed it. And he says, I Musa. He said, I received instruction of the discipline, of the understanding of Almighty Yahweh. I considered the Torah of Almighty Yah. We do not consider the Torah, Yisrael. We don't take time to consider that we may receive from our circumstances and what we, what we experience in life. The simplest of things. The wisdom of Almighty Yahweh. It's not far from us, Yisrael, that we had to climb upon the highest of mountains or dive into the depths of the sea. Solomon didn't have to do that. He just looked round about himself yes. and saw the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh, even in the simplest yes. of things. Yisrael, yes. we must look around ourselves. We must look. We must consider. We must take heed, Yisrael. Yes. Why? That we must receive the Musa. Yes. We need that, Yisrael. Yes. We must receive the instruction yes. of the disciplines yes. of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. That we may understand. We don't do that as a people. We don't do that as a nation. We don't consider ourselves. We don't consider the small things around us. We don't gaze upon our hearts and, and, and find those things that are displeasing the Almighty Yahweh. And when we do find them, when we do notice that, that things are not lining up right, we must execute them. We must Impale the body. We must yes. impale. We must kill the flesh and the lust and the desires of it, Yisrael. Yeah. Why? That we must. That we may receive Musa. We may receive understanding and the instruction of wisdom. Yes. We must do that, Yisrael. I must do it. That's the only way that we are going to grow and that we're going to be happy in Yahshua Hamashiach. Yes. That we must consider. We must look. We must observe. Hallelujah. That's why we miss so many things, Israel, in Torah. That's why we overlook so many things in our own life. Because we do not consider, we do not look. Yes. And he also says, it concludes here in the 33rd, vor 33rd verse of chapter 24 to Helium. Yet a little sleep, just a little bit. The smallest of things. Just a little time where our minds are taken from the mitzvah and the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Just a, it only takes a moment of time that we don't guard and watch our own hearts and our left and consider ourselves. Just a little, it says. Meal. Just a little sleep and a little slumber. Not much. Just a 
Just a little. And a little of the folding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come as one that travels by the way. And your lack of necessity, the necessary things that you need as an armed man are taken, Yisraeli. Where would we be without Yahshua HaMashiach? It's an example of a slowful man. He doesn't have Yahshua HaMashiach abiding in his heart, a slug. He don't have what it takes and what, it, what he needs to continue the path of the journey that has been set before him or his responsibilities, Yisraeli. But just a little sleep and a little slumber. So with that understanding and that knowledge, Yisraeli, I do want to begin this teaching concerning that. Concerning the small things. The little things. I'm not going to finish this today, but I'm going to continue in it. Because as I listen, as I hear from those of wisdom and great understanding of the Torah, that you can take just one word. And you can use that, Yisrael, mm -hmm. and you cannot even find even the wealth or dig to the bottom of the wealth of that understanding in that well in your lifetime. You know Hallelujah. Yeah. That describes even Almighty Yahweh, his Torah, his oh, Mishpah, his word that he speaks. We cannot find the depths of them, Yisrael. No. Hallelujah. Yeah. But yet, he says, when we see Yahshua HaMashiach, we will be as he is. Yeah. And yet, we will understand all things, Israel. Yes. Hallelujah. I like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to do some reading in Shirak, chapter 51, verse 1. Shirak. I'm going to somewhat go through this whole chapter, Israel, at least until the 16th verse. And then I want to make a move. Hallelujah. From there. That's all right. Talking about receiving the instruction, the Musa of Almighty Yah, as we look, even concerning the small things, Israel. It says in Shirak 51, verse 1. He said, I will give thanks, Todah, unto you. Yes, Almighty Yahweh. Have we given Todah unto yes, Almighty Yah? Don't you know the Torah speaks about the tongue and how it's an unruly evil and it sets a fire the course of even the nations? Yes, it does. But yet when the tongue is orchestrated by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, it's a very beautiful thing, and it's a powerful instrument. We should give Todah even for our tongues, Yisrael. Why? Because by it, we're able to give praises unto Almighty Yahweh vocally. Our tongue is a gift unto Almighty Yahweh. And we may stumble upon even the verse of that, Yisrael. But he said, give Todah unto Yahweh, even for the smallest things, Yisrael. The Torah commands us to give Torah even for everything. Yes. Not what we pick out or what we deem is worthy to Barat Yahweh for, yes. but he says everything. Sure Cold. Does. It doesn't leave anything out, Yisrael. Sure. It doesn't leave any stone unturned. Yes. Do we give Torah to Yahweh for the meal, even for the yes. small things? Yes. Don't you know that the things that we, or even the things that the Torah considers small, or that they have so much great value? And great riches and understanding and great wisdom, but yet we consider those things to be small. So even of the smallest of the things that Almighty Yahweh grants unto the house of Yisrael, it's of great wealth. That even we in our vernacular, in our speech, cannot find sounds or words to even describe it, Yisrael. I will give Toda unto Yahweh, my king. And I will praise you, O Yahweh, my Savior. Yes. I will give Todah unto your name. Yes. Have not the name of Yahweh been counted a small thing? Yes. That even the world do not pronounce it, Yisrael. Yes. Even the house of Yisrael, we don't extol the name of Yahweh as we yes. should. Yes. It has been done as a small thing. He has been called every other name. By that which he had called himself, Almighty Yah. Yes, Why? Because it has been considered a small thing. Yes. Verse 2. He says, for you have been my protector. You have watched over me. You have shielded me from the storm and from the rain. 
even from my enemies you have kept me. He said, you have been my protector and helper and has delivered my, it says here, my body. He didn't say my mind, my left. He says my body. Just know that Yah, he can deliver our bodies, Yisrael Yah. And he is able, above all Yisrael Yah, to do things beyond our, our imagination or what we can express, Yisrael Yah. He said, you have delivered my body from destruction and from the snare of a slanderous tongue. But you know, many times the snares are things we do not see. It catches us off guard, Yisrael. It's the small things, it's the little things sure that entraps us, I that, that keeps us, yeah. that calls us to stumble, these stumbling blocks. Yes, I know that. Many times the worst falls, Yisrael, are from things that are small. Right. A stone, a burr. Off of a sweet gum tree, some little things we see laying around so many times. Yes. It's the small things. Because the, the big things, we, we can see that coming. Yeah. And we can somewhat veer off the path for a moment. But it's the things that are meal, the things that are small. He said, Yahweh, you have delivered my body from the snare of a slanderous tongue. Mm -hmm. One that slanders, one that destroys. And one that slanders Yisrael Yah, many times, it's the small things yeah. that they say, yeah. the sly things, yeah. Yeah. the things that seem to be under the carpet that cannot be detected, that, ca that cannot be, be noticed or detected, that causes the most damage. That's what a slanderer does. He says, from the lips of one that utters Lies, untruths, and do not walk according to the Torah that deceives, that lies and wait for blood. A liar, he does not care for the souls of those that hear or that partake of that lie that he has spoken. He doesn't care. He's a slanderer. He said, you have kept me, my mind, my body, before those who stood Amadiya, he said, you are my helper. Yes. He said, before the Malak, before the messenger, Amadiya, it was you that stood in proximity. It was you that foresaw, foresaw my situation and my circumstance. And you are my helper. And did deliver me. And the greatness of your mercies, your hasi. And not only that, by your great name. Yes. The name of Yahweh is, is a strong and mighty tower. Yes. Those that are Sadiq, that are righteous, that are called of yes. Almighty Yahweh, we run for the protection of that. In his name is Raya, and we are saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By your mercy and by your name, Almighty Yahweh. Yes. From the gnashing of the teeth about to devour me. And the hand of those who sought my life, mm -hmm. the high, the high, and from many afflictions that I endure. He said, it was by your Torah, Almighty Yahweh. It was by your loving kindness. It was by your hasid, your wisdom, your understanding. He says in verse 4, from the choking fire on every side yeah. and from the middle of the fire which, I did, which did not kindle upon me. From the depths of the belly of even hell, and from an unclean tongue and lying works. Uh, me, Did I not talk about the tongue? How it can set a fire the course of even the nations? Yes, yes right, yeah. It is Yahweh that delivers us, Yisrael. Yes, from the slander of the tongue and the liars, Yisrael. Yes, even those things that seek to steal the Torah and the misfire from our own hearts. The lies and the doubt that even come from, from this vessel. And it's by the Torah and the leading of the Ruach HaKodesh of Almighty Yahweh that keeps me, Israel. Yeah. He says in verse 7, Shirach 51, 
He said, they surround me on every side. And there was none, no one to help me. But he did one thing, Israel, as Solomon done, as I have expressed this morning. He said, I looked, I observed for the assistance of men. Is that what we look for, Israel? Do we look to the flesh? Do we look for the assistance of flesh and of man, Israel? He said, and there was none. He said, I sought diligently. I watched. I looked for someone to help me, and there was none that stood. He said, then I remembered your mercy, almighty Yahweh, and your work from old. We don't consider, we don't remember, we don't, don't, don't zakah the works of old that almighty Yahweh has done for us, Yisrael. We count those as small things. Why? Because we don't, we don't remember them. We don't recollect. We don't meditate upon them. We don't awaken until the thought that Almighty Yahweh has done of old Israel. Yes. He has saved us. He has delivered us. Oh, yes. He has washed us. Yes. 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 For there was a situation in all of our lives that the very breath could have been taken from us. But yet, Almighty Yahweh was there. When we were drunken and it was not even cognizant. Lost in the way and stumbling, Israel. Yah. Yahweh, He was there with us to keep and to preserve us, Israel. Yah. Even as we rode upon the highways in these vehicles, these are death, these are death traps. These machines, if you're not careful, even when you're careful, there are more people that die and used that die in car accidents than even by drugs and things of that nature, Israel. Yah. Talking on their cell phones. And they die in a vehicle. But yet Almighty Yahweh has watched over us today. We're here today by the will of Almighty Yah. We're alive by the power of Almighty Yahweh. He has kept us by his Torah, by his misfire, and by his promises, Yisrael Yah. There have been lies been taken this morning and last night. But yet Yah, he has awakened us this morning. We must consider Yisrael Yah. Why? Because we count the breath that we take every second as a small thing. That, that it has been indebted to us. That somewhat, this, the breath that you just now took has been owed to us. And it has not been. It's only been by the mercies of Yah you was able to take that breath you just took. The breath I just took to say what I said has been given of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. So even the small things we do not consider, Israel, Yah, as we look upon this place, you're able to see. The vision may be dim to some of us, but yet we can still see, Israel, Yah. The small things, the meals. He said, I remember your mercy, O Almighty Yahweh, and your works, the things you have done of old, that you do deliver those who wait for you. Do we wait on Almighty Yahweh? Are we patient, Israel, Yah? To wait upon the promises of Almighty Yah. That wait for you. And do save. You preserve. Them from the hand. Of their enemies. Who do we think is our greatest enemy. Here today Israel. Yah? We've heard this so many times. But yet we do not consider that as yourself. It is us that is our greatest enemy. So you remember. So you're telling me Zakane, That the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Has delivered me from me today. Sure it has. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Isn't that so simple? That is so simple to even confound even the wisest. That we have been saved by the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, even from ourselves, our enemies. He said in verse 9, And I set upon my supplications from the Olam and pray. He said, I have sent out my palah. For the deliverance from death. He said, I, app- I appealed unto the Almighty Yahweh, who is my, av- he is my Abba, yes, he is. my master, my creator, not to forsake me in the days of my affliction. I don't want Almighty Yahweh to forsake me. I don't want his Mishra, his Torah to elude my mind, Yisrael. 
in the day of my affliction. That's why it's so important that any or every tidbit of the Torah, we must hold on to it, Israel. We must store it up in the Shemayim, Israel, because in his Torah, we find our riches and our wealth and our life. He said, do not forsake me in the days of my affliction and at the time when there is no help against the proud. He said, I will praise your name continually, Almighty Yahweh, and I will sing praises with thanksgiving. What is that? What is singing praises with thanksgiving? You know, we have this holiday or what is called holy days of thanksgiving coming to Israel. But it's not what this is talking about right here. And it's not with Todah. What well, amulation of Almighty to Almighty Yahweh? It is an offering. It is a sacrifice unto flesh. That's what it's all about. But when you truly give Todah and you give Todah unto Almighty Yahweh, it's unto yes, Him and yes. unto Him alone, Israel. Yah. We consider and we recollect what Yahweh has done for us. As was expressed, I look back on the days of old and I consider even the little of, of things that Yahweh has done for me. He said, my palah, my prayer, it was heard. For you did save me. You delivered me. Your Yasha has preserved me from destruction and has rescued me from an evil plight. He says, therefore, Almighty Yahweh, I will give Todah unto you and I will praise you. Yeah. Yahweh, he desires the praises, Yisrael. Yeah. He desires his name to be lifted up. But we consider that a small thing, Israel. It is not a small thing. We should open our mouths unto Almighty Yah. We should give Torah unto Yahweh for all he has done. Why? Because he has done, God told, great things that cannot, cannot be measured for us, Israel. But yet he only asks of a small thing, and that is to give him Torah. Give him Torah. Lift up my name. Obey my commandments. Walk in my statutes, Israel. He said, therefore, I will give Torah unto you and praises unto you, Almighty Yah. I will bless your name, Almighty Yahweh. He said the verse, verse 13, Sharat 51. He said, while I was still young in my youth, before I went on my travels, I sought wisdom openly in my palah, in my prayer. How many of us seek wisdom? Openly in our prayers, in our thoughts, in our thought process. Throughout the day, do we seek wisdom? Do we pray for the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh Yisrael? He says in verse 14, he said, before the tabernacle, I asked of her. He's talking about wisdom. And I will search for her to the last. To what? Until uh, the last day? Come on, my friend. The, the last day, Israel, of my life. He said, I will search for wisdom. I will search for understanding. I will search for the knowledge of Almighty yes. Yahweh. On, the knowledge of Yahweh seems a small thing unto the world, Israel. And to one that does not seek to appertain it, it is useless. It's but a small oh, thing. Yeah. But let us read on here and see what he has to say in Shirak. Yeah. Verse 15. He says, from blossom to the ripening grape, my heart delights in her. From the beginning of that blossom, that bud, we must delight in the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh. And sometimes we don't understand what it amounts to or what it shall be, the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh. But he says here that from the ripening, from the blossom to the ripening of the grape, he said, my heart delights in wisdom. My foot entereth upon the straight path. From my youth, I followed her steps. And look what it says. I said all that and read all that just to get to this, Israel, in verse 16. If we consider all that he has, has experienced, his enemies, the will of his flesh, the wanting of his own desire. Yet, he said, against my enemy, 
you have preserved me. For my own self, you have delivered me, Almighty God. As I saw and as I have studied, even for the smallest of the nugget of wisdom, they can be appertained. He says in verse 16, that I incline my ear a meot. He says a little. Just a little. If we would just incline our ear, Yisrael, yeah. a little. We must adjust our thinking, our thought process. We must listen intently, even for the smallest of things, Yisrael. Yeah. As has been exclaimed in Torah, the soft, gentle voice. Many times we do not hear that, Yisrael. Yeah. We hear one that is boisterous and that is loud. We hear our thoughts in our minds as they speak. But yet the Ruach HaKodesh that speaks unto us, we do not hear it, Yisrael. Yeah. I'm talking about the meal, the small things of understanding, the wisdom of Almighty Yah. We don't consider Yisrael. Yeah. We don't meditate. We don't think about those things, Yisrael. Yeah. He says here in Shorat that I incline my ear a little. He said, and I received of her. And what did he find? He said, and I found for myself much instruction. He said, that's what I found. Just as Solomon, as he observed, even that garden or that vineyard that was overgrown. It didn't have to be a very big vineyard. You see, vineyards that are small. You can just walk in, turn around and walk out, but yet they're vineyards. But he considered even that small thing and the wisdom and the preponderance of the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh that he considered himself in his own life. Have we considered our lives? Are not our lives small? They're short. They're like a vapor of smoke. You see it and in a moment of time you don't see, you wonder where it has gone. You know, I look back even on my short lived life. 34 years old. But it's like I have just awakened this morning, Israel. Yeah. It's so short. But yet, if we don't observe, if we don't watch our action and our ways, Israel, yeah, it's going to cost us our life. We're going to reap upon ourselves death. The one is that. It's been separated from Almighty Yah. So we must consider our life. We must consider our action. We must consider our ways, Israel. Yeah. We must incline our, he- our ears. That even from the simplicity of this message, even though today, we would just incline a little, Yisrael, Yah, that there would be great understanding that Yahweh will open unto us this day, Yisrael, Yah. I'm going to read that again, Shorat chapter 51, verse 16. He said, I incline my ear a little, a meal, and I received of her. And I found, he says, for myself, not for my neighbor. Not, I did not find instruction for the wicked man that is next to me. Those that are around me. He said, for myself. He said, I found for myself much. How much is much, Israel? It cannot be expressed. He said, I found for myself much instruction. I desire instruction, Israel. I desire Yahweh to guide and to lead me, to lead my steps, to lead my mind, to lead my heart according to his Torah and what he has commanded for us today, Israel. That we will incline, we will open our ears, open our minds, Israel, until even the small things. We must guard against the small things. We must judge even the smallest of things, Israel. That we might attain, that we may attain even the great things that Yahweh has in store for us. It's those things that we don't consider, those things that we don't comprehend, those things that we don't, Israel, observe and that we don't watch, that we miss out of the great blessings of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. Turn it to Mishli as we continue on talking about meal, the small things. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 8. Hallelujah. Yahweh, he is tough, his mercies. Hallelujah. It endures forever, Yisrael. 
You know, we, we count even the mercies of Yah. Why? Because we don't consider them as a small thing is right Yah. But yet, if it wasn't for his mercy, we would not be here alive today, Israel. Yeah. It says here in Mishli chapter 16, verse 8. It says, better is a meal, a little, with righteousness, than great revenues without justice. To obtain great riches by thievery and by lies. Amassing great wealth. You know, in some companies and some businesses, they say you have to lie a little, skirt the truth a little. They get behind or go through the back doors, all for prosperity or for riches. And they don't consider even the destruction that they apprehend, even unto themselves. And the injustice of it, Israel, of the riches. There's a great injustice in the land, the Torah speaks about. And that is the riches that have been taken by lies, by deceit. Why? For what? It's only for their own hurt, Israel. The nations are hurting because of the statues and the laws that they have incorporated, not according to the Torah. It never works, Israel. That's the truth. We as a people and as a nation, if we would divide the Torah as it should be, that even the riches and the wealth would be evenly distributed among the nation of Israel. Yeah. That we all would be wealthy. And full of riches and of the wisdom and the understanding of Almighty Yahweh, both in the Ruach and both physically, Israel. But because we have conformed our thoughts and our thinking processes according to what the world has done, Israel, yes, yes, yes. we have found ourselves in the predicament mm -hmm. that we find ourselves in, Israel. Yes. He said, Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without justice. Moving now to verse 16, the same chapter. Yeah. Just a few verses concerning me, O Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Better. What is better? Right. Is it more? Right. Is better heavier? On, is it stronger? Yes. Better exceeds the best. It exceeds the most. Yeah. It says better is meal, little, mm -hmm. with the fear, the array right. yeah. of Almighty Yah. I'd rather have yes. a little of the fear of Almighty Yahweh yes. than the great riches of the world. I would too. Yeah. Why? It says, then great treasures and trouble wherewith. Mm -hmm. With great treasures comes trouble. That's the truth. Even as we, just for a moment, if we would think upon the rich young ruler, as he saw Yahshua HaMashiach, mm -hmm. one of his, his greatest wealth or riches was his youth, his strength, his understanding. But yet he did not want to Allow that to be distributed throughout the nation. That's the truth. He was sorrowful. He had his own circumstances in mind. Even though he walked in the Torah by the letter of it. Yet Yahshua said that is one thing that you lack. And it seemed like a small thing unto him. But that is what kept him from the Melhu, the kingdom. Of Almighty Yahweh. It kept him from the wisdom of Almighty Yah. Yahshua, if we was just looking at that, he took the time to instruct the man to tell him what he needed to do to enter into the Melchu. What he had done was not enough. He said, go and sell what you have. And give it unto the needy, unto the poor. And he went away sorrowful. Why? 
Because he did not consider Yisrael. He did not weigh the words of Yahshua HaMashiach. He counted it as a small thing. Ecclesiastes, Ahoti, chapter 5, verse 12. Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, verse 12. Hallelujah. It says here in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 12, it says that the sleep of a laboring man, sure it, is. it is sweet. That's what he says. Why did I incorporate this, Yisrael? Like because a man, a man that labors, he works hard by the sweat of his brow. It doesn't take much to satisfy that nephesh or that soul. Why? Because a man that labors with that kind of intensity, he's a man that considers, that watches, that observes. He doesn't allow time to waste, but he, uh, he's about his about, his about's business. He says, the sleep of a labor man, it is sweet. Whether he eat meal, a little, just enough to sustain him, just a little water, just a little pouring out of the Ruach HaKadosh of Almighty Yahweh, it is a, enough for a man that labors. The small things of Almighty Yahweh, it is plenteous. Why? Because it is very much, Israel. Yes, it, is. it is sufficient for that man that labors. His, his sleep is sweet. He rests with assurance. He goes to bed and he rises up looking forward for, to another day, yeah. another day of labor, Beautiful. another day of working. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So it. it says, whether he eat little or much, it says, Yisrael, yeah. but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. That's the truth. Are we concerned about the abundance of the rich? Are we concerned about the abundance of the lust of the flesh? Are we concerned with the abundance of the lust of the eye, what we see, Israel? Are we consumed with that? And we're consumed with that, Israel, of the much of the world that we would not even consider the meal. We would not be able to sleep. There would be no comfort for us if we consider the things of the world. Because if you look upon what they have, it seems like they have everything. But they do not have Yahshua. They consider the Torah of Yah a small thing. But we know that the Torah of Yahweh is of great value. It's the essence of whom Almighty Yahweh is. And yet he has written that upon our laba, upon our mind, upon our heart, Yisrael Yah. Where will we have the riches or more riches than any nation of the whole, of the old world? Hallelujah. But yet it seems like a small thing, does it not, Israel? Again, Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Let us start reading here in verse 11, Israel. Concerning the meal, the small things, the wisdom of Almighty Yah, the understanding of Almighty Yahweh. We will just incline our ears to this message, Israel. There's so much of an abundance of, of wisdom and understanding of knowledge, of life. That comes from the Torah that is being read today. Israel. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11. I returned and I saw under the sun. That the race is not to the swift. Yes, yes, yes. This is concerning another observation or considering. Understanding. Of watching with intent, with understanding, that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet the riches of man of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. But it says here, but of time and of chance, it happens to them all. Is that not true, Yisrael? Yeah? But it says here in verse 12, For the son of Adam 
does not know his tie, his E, his tie. Do we consider that Israel, y'all? Are we doing all that we could do at this present time? He says, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, as the birds that are caught in a snare. You know, it don't take much to catch a fish. Really, it doesn't. You can throw a hook out there. There have been great fish or large fish catch with the smallest of hooks. Almost when you pull in, you look at your, your gear, it bends the hook, but yet you, you pulled in the, the prize. The small things is right here. He says, so are the sons of Adam caught in an evil time. Are we not in an evil time? Are we watching for the snares, Israel? Are we, are we staying, are our minds open? Are we staying sharp? That we watch for the, even the small things, the snare, Israel, that we are not taking. Hallelujah. He said, when it falls suddenly upon them, this wisdom, this is Solomon, said, this wisdom have I seen also under the sun. And he said that this wisdom it is great. It is God do to me. It is magnificent. It is broad. It is large. It is of great understanding. It is, it is of great wealth, he says, unto me. Is the Torah of great wealth unto us, Israel? The understanding, the knowledge that he gives unto us, Israel. He says here in verse 14, he said, there was a little city. Do we not hear Isaiah Cain, Benjamin, talk about a city that sits upon a hill that its light could not be hid? But the expression of this is talking about a little city. And it says that a few men dwell within it. And there came a great king against this little city, against this few people, this nation. They could not have... They, they, could not defend itself. Yes, sir. And besieged it, overcame it, took it into captivity, and built great bulwarks, it says, within it. Yeah. Verse 15. Now there was found in it, it says here, a poor, wise like man. Yes. A poor, wise man. Those among him did not consider him. He was counted as nothing. It's an old man walking about. Hallelujah. I brought you too, Zakeen. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Little in stature, but yet he has a great wealth of wisdom and understanding. I cannot even compare what I have, which is nothing to a Zacchaeus of that magnitude. Hallelujah. He's a poor man. Don't have anything. I observe how he operates, how he shops. Goodwill, secondhand shop. Hallelujah. But even us of young, we don't understand even the wisdom even in that. Hallelujah. Talking about a poor, wise man in this small city that was taken. But listen to what it says here as I came to It says, and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. This poor little man, old man. Hallelujah. Y'all Baraki as I came. I lift you up. Hallelujah. I bow to you. Hallelujah. Why? Because we do not consider that by an old man of that statue, the city is re, has been saved, Israel. We don't take it into consideration. It's something how we think about what others do and what others have done. We don't consider what we do and what we have done. We count what we do as small things. We don't judge ourselves. Talking about Neo, Israel. Yeah. It says this was a poor, he was a little, he was a wise man. Did not have riches, he was not considered, he was not looked upon. 
amongst his people that has taken this city, this king, did not even notice him. But he, by his wisdom, he delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. We don't consider Yahshua HaMashiach. We don't consider the miraculous thing he has done for us, Yisrael. Yah. We have been delivered. A small people. A little people. We have not been counted of the mercies of Yahweh because we were a great, powerful nation. But only because he considered us, Yisrael. Yah. He harbored us. He said it's a hover upon us, Israel. Yes. A people that were no people. But yet because of Yahshua HaMashiach, he has made of us a great nation. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. But yet throughout the day we forget, do we not, Israel? Yes. He has become this little poor thing amongst us, Israel. Yes. But yet it was by his dumb he has delivered oh. us. And it's by the beatings of, of, his, of his heart and of his mind and his intent, Israel. Yes. That we have a way unto the Abba today. And that we can come boldly before his throne, Israel. Hallelujah. It said it was not remembered that by the wisdom of this old man, this poor man, that the city was delivered. He said, I consider this in verse 16. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Was not the wisdom of that man? Did not it say that? Through his wisdom, delivered the city. Don't you understand? For a city to be besieged, there has to be a nation or a people that is much stronger, that is much richer, that is much more incapable than itself, that it could not defeat it, that it could not uh, preserve itself, Israel. That's the truth. So he considered that this wisdom of this old man is even better than the strength. Of that nation, of that people, the ones that came in and overtook Israel. Wisdom is better than strength. Yeah. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom, it is despised. Sure it is. We despise the Zarkane that have the wisdom, the poor man, Israel. It should not be. For by them we are delivered. It is by the Zarkane, those that have the experience, that have the understanding, have the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh, that we are delivered, Israel. And we consider them as a small thing. We don't think about them. We don't think about the elders as I came. And his words, it says here, they are not heard. We don't hear the words of the wisdom. We don't hear the words of the wise, Israel. That's why we're in the predicament of the situation that we are in. Why? Because we do not consider even the small things. We do not take it to heart, Israel. It says in verse 16, Verse 17. The words of the wise man yes. hearkened to inquire better than the outcry of the ruler among fools. He says, better to hearken unto the quietness of an old man, to the wisdom of an old man, than to observe the folly of the wicked and their clamorous ways. The Torah talks about a clamorous woman. She's loud. She's verbose. She's boastful. She wants everybody to notice her. But the Torah says better is the quietness of a wise man. He said we must hearken unto that. It is better than the outcry of the ruler among fools. Verse 18. Concerning wisdom again, Yisrael. Wisdom, wisdom is better than weapons of war. Sure it is. No doubt about it. Why is that so? If, and if we just think carnally mm -hmm. at what this is saying, what use is a gun, a rifle, ah, yeah. when you go and you hunt for your prey, the deer, and you don't know how to use it? You can have the best of armaments, the best scope. It can be camoed or black. But yet, if you don't have the wisdom and the understanding or the knowledge to use it, 
then it's of no use. Because wisdom is better. Hallelujah. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. But the sinner man, he destroys much tough. You see what that does, Israel, y'all? The sinner man destroys much tough. Even the tongue, it's a little member, is it not? Compared to the body, but yet it can destroy so much. That's why we must use our tongues wisely. We must speak Torah. We must speak with the wisdom and the understanding that Yahweh gives us, Israel. And then the tongue will be of great value and great worth, even unto the nation of Israel. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 1. It says here that as dead flies cause the ointment of the Afriki, or in Hebrew, the pronunciation, Alhath, and basically what that is, it's just the instrument that is used to apply the perfume or the fragrance or the, that essential oil to spray. So it says, even as a fly causes the ointment of the atrophy to send forth a stinking savor. Yes. Just a fly. It's not a fly, a small thing. Yes. A gnat in the ointment. It spoils the whole bottle of mirth and incense. Yes. That it stinks, Israel. Yes. That is what sin does. Yes, it does. Do we not talk about the slothful or the sluggard? Yes. The little? Yes. The folding of hands? Mm -hmm. The sleepiness? The drowsiness? Yes. And he found himself without Israel. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Let us not sleep. Let us not slumber in the house of Almighty Yah, Israel. Yeah. Come on, we must shake ourselves, Israel. Yeah. A message of simplicity, even unto myself, Israel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let us awaken. Yeah. Let us stay awake in the house of Yah. Come on, Israel. Yeah. You know, you, you nod and you blink your eye. That's when you miss the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Just that quick blink, blink, just that little nod, Israel, yeah. and you've missed out on the entire truth and the entire message. Yeah. Just as this dead fly in the ointment, it sends forth a stink of savor. It says, also does a little frivolity. Yeah. Just a little play. Yeah. Just a little joke. Mm -hmm. Outweighs wisdom and honor. That says a lot, Israel. Yeah. Just a little, a meal. You might not think it's, it's any harm in what you say, yeah. but because of the foolishness yes. and the approach and the intent, That's it says it outweighs truth. even the wisdom and the honor, Israel. Yeah. That's the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us take heed. Yes, Verse 2, a wise man's heart yes. is at his right hand. Is not Yahshua yes. HaMashiach sitting at the right hand of our Abba? Yes. Should we let our right hand know, or our left hand know what our right hand is doing, Israel? Yeah. But a fool's heart is in his left. Verse 3. And also when a fool's, when fool walks along the way, his heart lacking. It's lacking. And he says to everyone that he is a fool. A fool walking along a straight path, he doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know what he is doing. And his actions gives him away. His folly, it gives him away. He let everyone know that I'm a fool. I don't know where I'm going. Yahshua sure HaMashiach has set before us a straight and narrow path. But yet we do not walk therein. We do not walk according to the Torah. According to the example that he has set for us, Yisrael Yah. Anyone can tell a fool. He gives himself away quite quickly, especially along the way. It says in verse 4, that the ruler of the ruler has risen up against you. He said, do not leave your place. Do not leave your stance. Don't you know that it only takes a little movement for you to move out of your place, out of your stance? As we hear so much, I have not been in the military, but I heard many examples of all that have been in the military. And when you're standing at attention and the sergeant is displeased, he's in your face, you must stand at attention. 
Moving out of the tension is not you taking a step out. Right. It's the blinking of your eye, the arching of your eyebrows, the expression of your face. It's the little thing, Israel. Right. That is what it is talking about here, us leaving out of the place. Right. Us not abiding in the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh because we have moved out of our place by the little thing. We flinch. We fight. We roll our eyes. We do not consider our own action our own ways. And do not know even by just that action we have been moved out of our place. We're outside the covenant. We're outside the will of Almighty Yahweh. We have overstepped the boundaries of the Torah. He said, when the ruler of the place he rises up against you, do not leave your place. For yielding, that's any kind of movement. For yielding specifies great of fence, Israel. Moving on to yes. Song of Solomon. I have talked about this, Israel, concerning the song, the, the small foxes. The Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. And then we're going to move to on to Matitia, chapter 18. Yes. Hallelujah. Right. It says in Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, just this one verse. It says, take us, the foxes, let us observe, let us watch our actions and our expression. Yes, I must, Forgive me. The foxes, yet it's the little foxes that spoils the vines. Mm -hmm. For the, our vines have tender grapes. Sure. Are not we, Israel, mm -hmm. like vines? Are we not like the orchards, the vineyards? Yet we are very tender. Any little thing offends us. Any little thing calls us to spoil. Between a, a husband and a wife, an ish and an ishal, any little thing. That's what he was talking about right here. The songs of Solomon. Any little thing, Israel. Right, it's the little foxes that, that, that spoils the sweetness and the tenderness of the Ahava and our love toward Yahshua HaMashiach. Ahava and our, our love towards one another, Israel. Right, Moving on to Metithia chapter 18, verse 1. The little foxes that spoils the vines. Hallelujah. It is those little things that spoils our hava, the tenderness of the affections of Almighty Yahweh, Israel. Come on, Israel. Let us take heed. Let us be vigilant. Oh, yes. Matthew chapter 18, verse 1, Matthews. And at the same time came the disciplined ones, the disciples, unto Yahshua HaMashiach. And they asked this question, saying, Who is the greatest in the Melchut or the kingdom of the Shemayim, the kingdom of heaven? And Yahshua said, he, had, he called a little child unto him. A babe, a baby. Harmless. They're harmless. Yes, they are. They're harmless in their actions, Israel. We must understand, children are just a reflection of the parents. Even the disciples of applications. So while you're looking at your baby and your child, it, it, that reflects me. That reflects you, Israel. Right, so Yahweh, he uses this child. Why? Because children, they observe and they look. They watch. They might not understand many times, but they take note. You find them responding the way you respond. They act the way you act. Yet we find ourselves disciplining them, but we don't discipline ourselves. Yeah, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. We should be Almighty Yahweh's reflection, Israel. We should be reflect the actions of Almighty Yahweh. No Hallelujah. Let me move on. And y'all, y'all sure call a little child unto him, precious and again pure, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Truly I say unto you, Did this have great wealth of understanding, great value? Yeah. Yahshua sure HaMashiach sent this child, this bane? Why did he do that, Yisrael? He said, except you be converted 
except you change. Except you move out of those hardened ways that you have established in your life. Except you lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets you out of the path. Every little thing. And become as this child. You shall not enter into the Melchut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. Did you hear that? It said you become as that little being right there, these little children. They're pure in their action and their ways. Yes, they are. Even when they, what we would call show out and are being bad, it's pure, Yisrael. See, we, we're, we're a fake and we phony. Instead of just being honest and being up front, we lie and walk amongst each other as hypocrites and deceivers. And we put on a front. Children don't do that. That is what Yahweh is saying. That is what he expresses. Unless you be converted. Unless you allow the Torah and the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh to work in your life. And you become converted as one of these little pure children. He said, you will not enter into my Melku. You will not enter into the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. There are not going to be any hypocrites or any liars in the kingdom of Israel. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, this little babe. The same is the greatest in the Melku of the Shemayim. Can you see the expression on the faces of the disciplined ones? Discipline in Torah. Walk with Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes, See him work the miracles that he worked in that time. And Yahshua says unto them, you must become as one of these. Strong men. Men of knowledge, understanding. But he said, unless you become as one of these, you will not inherit the kingdom of Almighty Yah. He says in verse 5, And whoso shall receive one such as this little child in my name, he says in my name, if you receive this little child, he said he receives me. Yes. How often do we receive the little children, Israel? Yes. You know, there are people that don't like little children, that despise children. And they were children once themselves. Is that, is that not foolish? Is that not of the utmost, if we can express stupid, stupidity? But Yahshua said to the disciples, you despise this little child, you despise me. You receive this name of Israel. This next generation of the Torah should be placed in his love, in her heart. He said, you receive me. Verse 6. But whoso offended one of these little ones, this ma'u, this little one, which believe in me, it would be better for him that a millstone were tied and they were hang about his neck and that he was thrown into the depths of the sea. That's dramatic. Yes. Yahshua HaMashiach, he meant business. He says, damn you, if you don't become as one of these. Talking about the meal, Israel, yes. the little things. Yes. You know, it's the little things that damn us. It's the little things that cause us to walk out of the Torah and out of the will of Almighty Yahweh. He said, it would be better for you if a millstone be tied around your neck than for you to offend this little bane that trusts and that believe in me with the innocency of its purity. Verse 7. Woe unto the world because of their offense. Mm -hmm. for, it is, for it must needs be that offense come, but who to that man by whom it offends? How does that come, Israel? Oh, yes. Do we offend one another? We offend Yahweh. Yes. We offend Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes. Yes. Verse 8. Wherefore, if your hand or your foot offend you, cut them off. Yes. He means business. If there's something that is in your left, yes. as the world would say, you got something stuck in your crawl, you better get it out. Yes. You better cut it off. Yes. Because you're not going to enter into the presence of the Melchizedek of Yahweh with that kind of spirit. No, I'm not. No, I am. With that kind of filthiness in your heart, in your left, Yisrael, it would be better you just cut it off if it's an offense. And cast them from you. It is better for you to enter into life. Yes. How or maimed. Mm -hmm. Without a foot, without a leg. Without that thing that offends Almighty Yahweh. Yes. Rather than having two legs or two feet. 
and be cast into everlasting damnation, into everlasting fire. And if your eye offend you, pluck it out and cast it from you. It's not the eye just a small thing, but it's a member of the whole body, is it not, Yisrael? Yes, it is. See, we don't believe that there comes a time that Yah purifies his house. Anything that offends him, he cuts it off, Yisrael. Is he able to restore? Sure, he's able to restore. Is he able to restore that eye? Sure, he's able to restore that eye. That foot, yes, he can restore that foot, Yisrael. But in this instance, we must be willing. To do whatever it takes, Israel, if we love him, if we love Yahshua HaMashiach as we say we do, then we will cut off those things that offend Israel, and we will cast them off. He says, it's better for you to enter into life everlasting, the high of Yah, with one eye, rather than having two eyes and be cast into hell. Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say to you that in heaven... There are Mel- Melikim. Mm-hmm. Do always behold the face of my Abba, which is in the Shemayim. Is it all the time that Melikim that beheld, that ho- upholds his face? Oh, yeah. For the Son of Man is come to deliver that which was lost. He has come to deliver that which was lost. What was lost? The indices, the praise. Yes. Those that depend, that believe, that stand on the Torah, the Mishra of Almighty Yahweh. He says in verse 12, How think you if a man have 100 sheep, and one of them be gone astray? One seems a very small number out of a flock of a herd of thousands, does it not? Just one sheep. Hallelujah. Don't you know that we or you are just that one sheep out of many Israel? Beautiful, yes. Let me read on. He said, Does he not leave the 99? And go to the mountains and seeks after. He watches, he looks with intent. That one sheep is on his mind out of the whole herd. Hallelujah. Don't you know we was on Yahshua's mind when he was on the stake? We were that one sheep. We are that one sheep. We are that which has been lost, Yisrael, from the Melchizedek, from the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh. We are that thing that Yah desires. That one thing that is missing. As that we express, what well, is man that we are so mindful of him? Why? Because man, we are that one sheep that is out of the flock, that is missing out of Melchizedek. Even all that Yahweh has in the Shemayans, it is not complete without us. But we are, we are but small things in this vast creation that Yahweh has made. But yet he considers us, Yisrael, Yah. Just as Solomon considered the ant. Just as he considered the vineyard. Yahweh considers us this night, this day, Yisrael, Yah. His assembly of his people. Why? That he may restore that which was lost, Yisrael, Yah. Is that not beautiful, Yisrael, Yah? He has chose you out of many to be just a few. Hallelujah. His, the, the desire of his heart. So he seeks that which has gone astray. Verse 13. So if so, that he find it, truly I say to you, he rejoices more of that sheep. Yahweh, he rejoices more over the praises of Yisrael. He rejoices more of that sheep than of the 99 which have not gone astray. Than the whole host of the Shemayim, Yisrael. He rejoices more. Yahweh rejoices more over us, Yisrael. As long as we abide in his misfire and his statutes and his commandments, and we are hover here, we love him with all that is within us, Israel. He says he loves them more out of that 99 that went not astray. Even so, it says here in verse 14, even so, it is not the will of your Abba, which is in the Shemayim. He said it is not his will that we go astray, not just one of them. That's why we should not keep or hold back the children. When they open their mouths, when they praise, when they shout. Even the little babies, they hear the commotion and they want to join in, Yisrael. Y'all let them shout. Let them cry. Hallelujah. He said, even so, it is not the will of your Abba, which is in Shemayim, that one of these little ones should perish. That's all right. I like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's not his will that even one of us should perish. Oh, 
He knows the hair, the count of the hair even upon our heads just right here. Hallelujah. He's not even willing that even one should perish. Y'all is not going to let us go. Yes, right, y'all. Hallelujah. Despite of yourself, he's going to save his elect. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Totally, y'all. Totally, y'all. Just a few more years, right? I'm not going to finish this. There's so much I want to deal with. We're just dealing with the meal. Hallelujah. I started out reading out of Proverbs chapter 24. Hallelujah. So I'm going to continue with that. How many messages may come out of this? I do not know. Hallelujah. But today we're just dealing with me, the small things. I want to continue in Shirak where I left off. I left off at Shirak chapter 51 verse 16. I will move on to verse 17. As I bring this to a close, Israel, y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even as we finish Shirat, we may even venture into Jeremiah just for a bit. But it says here in Shirat, chapter 51, verse 17. He said, I made progress therein. This is, if you recall, he was talking about the wisdom, inclining his ear just a little and receiving the great wealth. Have we not heard just a little bit of the little of the small things, and how they play such a big part and the most part, even in the will and in the Melchizedek of Almighty Yah. So he says, I have inclined my ear just a little and have received great understanding, great wealth, great knowledge. So he continued in 17, he said, and with that I make progress. I moved on. I became stronger. I took another step forward, Yisrael Yah. That is what wisdom causes us to do. It causes us to move on. As the old condition would say, higher heights and deeper depths of Yahshua HaMashiach, wisdom causes us to progress, not degress. Sin causes us to degress. He said, I made progress. He says, to him who gives wisdom, he said, I will give honor. He said, for I resolve to live according to wisdom. He said, I was zealous for the tough and sell and shall never be put to shame. He said, I've been jealous, I have been zealous for tough. But as long as I walk in the wisdom of Almighty Yahweh, I will not be ashamed. Verse 19. He said, My soul grappled with wisdom, and my conduct I restrict. Are we strict in our conduct and how we act? How we perceive ourselves amongst ourselves and amongst the world, Yisrael Yah. We should be as a city that sits upon a hill. But in our conduct, how we perceive, how we act amongst each other in the world, Yisrael Yah, it shows how much wisdom we have. So you judge your own heart, Yisrael Yah. There is none. There is no wisdom without the wisdom of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. He said, I was strict in my conduct. He said, I spread out my hands unto the Shemayim, and I lamented by the ignorance of her. He said, I lamented. Yeah. I cried. Because it showed my ignorance and what I lacked. How much I truly possess, how much I truly have. Yeah. Verse 20. He said, I directed my nephesh to her, and through purification, I allowed the wisdom and the understanding and the knowledge of just this little bit of inclining my ear to purify, to purge, to, to, to cast off those things, those wicked things that were not of Almighty Yahweh. He said, through purification, I found her. And I gained understanding. See, even in all that wisdom, yes, yes. the knowledge, through setting aside the weights and those things that Easily beset him or besets us aside, yes, right, yeah. He said, I gain understanding of that wisdom. And with her, from the first thereof, he said, I will not be forsaken. We will not be forsaken, yes, right, yeah. By the wisdom, the great understanding, and the wisdom of Torah, the riches of Almighty Yah. He said, My heart was stirred to seek her. Wherefore, I have gained 
a good possession. He said, from that little lending of my ear, taking time to observe, watching diligently, inclining my ear, he said, I have gained of a tough possession. He said in verse 22, Yahweh gave me a tongue. You recall me talking about the tongue, Israel, y'all? A ruling, unruly evil, sets of fire the course of nations. The slandering of the tongue, it divides, it separates. But yet a tongue that walks circumspect and according to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, it is, it is of great value, that small thing. So it says here in verse 22, he said, Yahweh gave me a tongue as my reward. We don't think the tongue is a reward, do we, Israel? We do so much evil and so much wicked things and speak so much wicked, use it for so much wicked things. We don't think it to be a blessing. The tongue of my ox, because it speaks the Torah and what thus saith Almighty Yah. It is a blessing unto me. Our tongue should be a blessing to the house of Israel. Not a curse, Israel. He said, Yahweh gave me a tongue as my reward. And I will praise him with it. Hallelujah. 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 Let us praise Yahweh with our tongue, Israel, Yahweh, with our mouth. Hallelujah. Let what come forth out of our mouth show the excellence of his wisdom and his understanding that he has given unto us, Israel, Yah. Because even from that small thing, hallelujah, comes forth the great wealth and the great riches of Almighty Yahweh. And it's a sweet thing unto Almighty Yah. It catches his attention. He stops what he's doing and he listens, Yisrael Yah. Why? Because the tongue is a gift that he has given unto us, Yisrael Yah, that we may praise him, that we may lift up our voices unto him. That we may remember Zakah. The works of old. For what he has done for us. The Malak, the Malachim, they don't have that, Yisrael. They don't have a testimony. But we have a testimony. Because Yah has brought us through. Hallelujah. And Yahweh, he shall deliver us. And he has delivered us. So let us use our tongue for tongue. And exalt and praise the name of Almighty Yahweh. Let us exalt our neighbor. Let us recognize the Zarkane. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says in verse 23, draw near unto me. He said, you who are untaught. Enlarge in my school. That's what wisdom says. That's what understanding says. You that are as I can have the wisdom, that should be your cry. We should go to those, Israel, that has this understanding and this knowledge of this wisdom. Why? That we may be taught. Why? Because we are untaught. We don't understand. We do not know, Israel. Verse 24. Why do you say you are lacking of these things? And why are your souls very thirsty? He said, I opened my mouth and said, get these things for yourself without money. We don't have to pay anything for wisdom, Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Yahweh doesn't charge us for understanding. You know, there are companies, there are businesses that make a living yeah. off of people uh, desiring certain knowledge and understanding. Yeah. Colleges, institutions, you pay for that. There are people that most people are in debt for the rest of their lives for a knowledge that do not sustain, a knowledge that do not enhance them, Israel. Yah. But Yah give us his wisdom, his understanding to enhance us that we may grow and yeah. the knowledge and the wisdom of what he desires us to do, Israel. Yah. Yeah. If we don't have to pay anything for it. Yah, yeah, sure, Hamashiach has paid it all. Yeah. It is given unto us, Israel. Yah. He said, I open my mouth and say, get these things for yourself without money. Put your neck under the yoke and let your nephesh receive instruction. Don't you know wisdom? It does have a weight. 
But with it, with, with it comes great knowledge and understanding and great responsibility. It is a yoke, Yisrael. But it is not a weight and a yoke that we cannot bear, Yisrael. Yeah, yeah. Yahshua said, my, my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The wisdom, this way, this path, this understanding is not too much that you cannot bear, Yisrael. Yeah. He said, put your neck under the yoke and let your nephews receive instruction. It is not to be found, it is to be found, excuse me, close by. It's not far away. It is to be found close by. All we have to do is observe, watch, look. Around us, Yisrael, our daily lives, our daily walk. Just as Solomon, just as he did in his walk, his journey, he observed. We must observe, we must listen, we must watch, Yisrael. Verse 27, he says, see with your eyes that I have labored little and found myself much rest. He said, get instruction with a large sum of silver and you will gain by it much gold. May your nephews, your soul rejoice in his mercies and be not ashamed when you praise Almighty Yahweh. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said even in just a little labor, just in a little labor, as we seek the understanding of Almighty Yahweh, even if only but a few minutes, if you seek with all your level, with all your heart, Yisrael, you will gain much understanding, much wisdom. Verse 30, the last chapter in Shirak. He said, do your work at the appointed time. Yes, sir, and in Yahweh's time, he will give you your reward. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want that reward, Israel. Yeah. I want Yahweh's reward. Yeah. I don't want the reward of the wicked. Hallelujah. They may have these things just for a time. But it's only for a moment, Yisrael. Yah. But Yah's reward is for everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. And how can we measure? You cannot put it on a scale. You cannot measure in inches or feet. It's much more than we ever could understand, Yisrael. Yah. The knowledge and his great reward and the wealth and understanding in his Mishvah and his Torah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Told to Yahweh. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to read just one more thing, Israel, and I'm going to stop. Hallelujah. Todiyah. Let me turn here. Hallelujah. Todiyah Yahweh for all things, Israel. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, as I bring this message to a close. Hallelujah. Uh, yes. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. It said, Wherefore seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us. That, it's not even an enormous amount of weight. It's, just, it's the little things, Israel. We must set every weight yeah. aside. And the sin which thus easily beset us, and let us run with patience yeah. this race that is set before us. Looking unto Yahshua HaMashiach, yeah. which is the author and the finisher of Aimunah, yeah. which for the joy that was set before him, he endured the stake. That was a joy. Is it a joy for us to endure affliction and suffering for the sake of Yahshua HaMashiach? It should be a joy, Israel. It, it should be an opportunity that we, that, that we do not pass up. He said, despising the shame 
and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Almighty Yahweh. For he, for consider him that has endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. You know, we are among that crowd, Israel. Yeah. It is us that set him, that he had to go to the stake for Yisrael. But yet we're not willing to endure just for a time of suffering for him, Yisrael. Just a little, a little suffering. Just a short time. The reward of that is greater and much more, Yisrael, than we could expound or boast upon our suffering. And we have not endured as Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, for consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your own minds. Yes. See, in our own minds, we go through so much, do we not? In our own minds, our, our trials and our situations are so much greater than anybody else's, but we have not considered Yahshua. Yeah. You know, considering Yahshua is considering your op, your neighbor. It's considering your Ahok Yisrael. You're not going through the greatest of trials. As a matter of fact, you're not going through a thing. Because if you were truly enduring, then you would be one that considers others and not yourself. So what you're doing is in vain. You have not truly suffered. You have not truly endured until you consider your op. Until you have considered your Raya, your friends. That's when the deliverance comes, Yisrael. That's when Eo's trials, and he was delivered when he prayed for his friends. His Raya, Yisrael, he was delivered. So you're not going through nothing because you're not praying for your Raya. I'm just going to be that honest with you. You're not. Hallelujah. Todiah. Hallelujah. So what should that cause us to do? It should cause us to search our lab for those impurity, for those things. Yes, that when we do come to a trial or situation or suffering that we consider Yisrael, that we consider Yahshua HaMashiach. It says in verse 4 that we have not resisted yet unto blood striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto us as unto our children. He said, My son, despise not the chastening of Yahweh, nor faint when you are rebuked of him. For whom Yahweh loveth, he chasteneth, and he scourgeth every son that he receives. So out of all we should understand and know that Yahweh, he receiveth us, Yisrael, by the rebuke, by his chastising, by Showing and telling us how much we really love one another and how much we really love him. Hallelujah. That's his Ahava. And one more verse as I end this today. Hallelujah. He says in verse 7 that if we will endure the chastening. Endure the chastening. Why? Because Yahweh, he dealeth with you as he does with a son. Hallelujah. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Hallelujah. So we should not despise the chastening of Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because look at, he has given us so much, Israel. If we would just incline our ear, just a little, even the chastening would not be even necessary if we would do what we are told, if we would obey. And we will walk according to his statutes and according to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Yes. And if we will take heed and consider even the things that are meal, the things yes. that are small. Yes. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Yahweh yes. brought you Israel, yes. Hallelujah. I pray that this message yes. has been a strength. It has been a strength to my left. Yes. The simplicity yes. of the knowledge of his understanding, Israel. Yes. That he has given us so much, Israel. Yes. Even in the small things. Even in the little things. And let us not, let us not forget it's the small foxes, Israel, that destroys the tenderness of the Ahava and of the love. It's the fruit, Israel, which we should bear. So let us guard ourselves by the Torah. 
Let us build up our gates. Let us repair the hedge that sustains and that surrounds us, Israel, y'all, and that we watch closely our hearts and our minds, which is the vineyard, and that we pull up every weed, every little thing. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, Israel, y'all. For this is a beautiful day that Yah has made. We shall rejoice. We shall lift up our voice. Hallelujah. With the gift that he has given us, which is our tongue, and that we use it wisely. Hallelujah. To give him praise. Hallelujah. Almighty Yahweh, we told you for this beautiful Shabbaton, you have given us Abba Yahweh. But truly, Yahweh, I have rested. We have rested in the knowledge of your truth and your understanding. And you have given unto us this day, Abba Yahweh. We do pray sincerely, Abba Yahweh, you will continue to chastise us, yes, Almighty Yah. Show us our ways, our downfalls, and our shortcomings, that we can come, Abba Yahweh, boldly to your throne of your Melchul, of your kingdom, Abba Yahweh, knowing that we have done everything you have commanded us, Abba Yahweh, but most of all, you have cleansed us, you have washed us, and you have received us in Yahshua HaMashiach. We do ask, Yahweh, that those that are listening by via of live stream, you will strengthen those today. Those that are hungry, Abba Yahweh, you will provide that which is needed, Abba Yahweh. And that you will take those that have come, Yahweh, from near and from afar home safely today. And all things we do give you total, and that's cold, all things. In Yahshua HaMashiach's name we do declare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. Yabarak Ko Yisrael, Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah.